Hey everybody, this is Austin from the Best I Can Afford Antiques channel. Now, you might remember this little jade and silver bowl. If you don't, you should go back and watch the video. Because this has turned out miraculously. And I am, uh, I'm getting another piece of silver. And, uh, I actually paid 99 cents for a relatively large silver bowl. I was the only bidder and I won at 99 cents, but, uh, but yeah, look at that, buddy. I mean, yeah. I'll tell you how I cleaned it. I'm actually going to do a long, like, relaxing video on how to clean a silver piece. Because this has worked out so well. I mean, that was like a brownish, I mean, almost black. Look at, look at that sucker gleam. Oh my goodness, Austin. Add that to your list of skills. Gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna set him in my cure wheel real quick. I got something pretty special for you guys today. I think it's special anyway. I mean, I think a lot of stuff's special, so you'll have to excuse me if it's just not as neat as I'm leading you to believe currently. Allow me to put that gentleman back in his little spot there. Okay. I've decided I'm gonna start cutting these boxes open before I, uh, before I uh, start filming, and most of the way, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna rip us off too much, but I don't like, um, I don't know, I don't know how YouTube feels about things. Okay. <laughs> Let me just take that off screen. Okay. Perfectly packaged little deal. <clears throat> and I think you guys are gonna be just a little bit jelly belly when you see this fella. I paid uh paid seventy nine dollars for this. Almost $100 really after uh, shipping and everything, but you know what? Some things, gosh, I mean, it doesn't matter how big they are or anything. It's, uh, it's all about how much you love a thing. And do you know what? Hehehehe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Do you recognize these flowers? Listen, this is important. Because now we know who this gentleman is. Look at this four-sided little beautiful vase. Tiniest little masterpiece. I, this is actually probably my, my favorite small vase that I own now. I mean, just to have that on the back where no one was ever going to see it. I mean, look at that wire work. Look at that shading. Those reeds. I mean, that is beautiful. Look at this broken reed that he replicated almost perfectly with wire and crushed glass in liquid form. Oh, we are going to talk about this artist. You know, we open those, uh, we open those red vases. Oh my goodness. These are irises, from what I understand. So I believe that this vase is the same exact artist. Or at least in the same school of this artist. So, I think what we've got here is a collection of Hayashi Kodenji, Kodenji vases. 
Let's turn down this light so we can all see. Now we're looking at them, aren't we? Okay. So let's uh let's chop sticker here. This is actually a really exciting day for me. This is this is a neat little story that we've got in front of us, and I'm gonna tell you all about it. Because I swear, I swear, even though I'm new to this, I've been researching these things so heavily. Now listen. I took a long time. <laughs> Obviously, I've been comparing these flowers all over the internet. Anytime I see these wire-filled irises, I just automatically assume... Sorry, hold on one second. Do I have any water in here? Oh, no! Hold on. Hold on. Alright. <laughs> I just automatically assume they're the same artist. No, I'm actually a little mistaken on that. So if these are, in fact, Hayashi Kodenji, uh, which I've compared flowers, and I've compared cranes, and I've seen um, both of them are, oh my goodness, are strikingly similar in style. I mean, I've seen the cranes on several different pieces. I've seen the... Uh, the uh, flowers on several different pieces, and they're always uh, drawn in these intricate line patterns. Now, I learned something interesting. Uh, Hayashi Kodenji had a son, uh, the first and the second, okay? So, him and his son worked together frequently. Now, not only that, but they signed their pieces exactly the same. So, um, even though the father died in 1915, uh, there's no differentiating between the styles like they they are both that artist for all intents and purposes um, One of them worked for the Ando Cloisonne company as an artist <clears throat> and uh, I would have to assume that would be the younger because uh, The later start date for the Ando studio that would have been employing artists as opposed to just I believe Ando Jubei just uh, doing the art. Now, if anybody sees any of these videos and I say anything wrong, feel free to correct me. I mean, I'm doing, I'm doing just tons of research, but I'm, you know, I'm, I don't know if I'm retaining it all. I don't know if the things I'm reading are always correct. So, let's look at this new guy again, huh? Let's just, uh, let's just make sure all of his bubs are safe. So look. This is a slightly different style, like especially from the other small one. Now this looks almost like it could have been somewhat mass produced. This little copper top here, you can kind of wiggle just a little bit. Um, I don't want to say mass produced, but it almost seems as though this is a later piece following a pattern from an earlier piece like this. <clears throat> you can see the technique. It's just a little finer on the uh, on the black one there, isn't it? A little bit finer wire work. Um, I don't know. The technique looks a little a little more soulful. I don't know. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is there. It's definitely a little more flowing, isn't it? So yeah, I'm inclined to believe that you know maybe this is a piece made by the younger while he was working at Ando, or even in just in the school of him and his father's designs. <clears throat> this is obviously purely speculation. I apologize if my microphone sounds funny today. Oh my goodness, for how small this is, look at the wire work and that stuff there. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Who made those little flowers right there? Well, we know, don't we? Hayashi Shodenji. Kodenji, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, sir. Please forgive me. Even if you're not with us anymore, I sincerely apologize if I just messed that up. Hayashi Kodenji. I mean, I have to assume that that's one of, one of their finer little pieces. I mean, and that's definitely not mass-produced. Someone worked very hard on this, drawing all those reeds, drawing these perfect portions of the plants down here. There's even a tiny, tiny geometric pattern on the border end up at the top. 
I mean, look at that. I mean, if this was sitting by itself, six inches away from the camera, you would think it was six feet tall. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. Goodness gravy. Those little blue flowers at the bottom, they are lovely. Now, I'm not going to lie. I must not have read the size on this ad because I thought this was like going to be a seven inch vase, which obviously the scale of the quality would lead you to believe that it was larger, wouldn't it? I mean, that's a, that is a lovely little thing. <coughs> so yeah, I hope we all, I hope we all learned something. I certainly hope it was the right thing to have learned. I mean, these pieces must all be related. Let's, let's get them all in and uh, really try and look at their similarities. What a beautiful little family. I mean, you know, they may be, they may be separated by a generation, but certainly the same technique was employed in the flowers and, uh, they're pretty lovely little things, aren't they? Yeah, all right. We got a whole little family back together. I mean, that's like, that's like, um, mommy and daddy and, uh, Sonny Jim and Sue. That's, that's pretty good. I like that quite a bit. I think I'm going to make it my mission to get a, uh, a larger piece by this guy. Because uh, I really like him. I really like his designs and his flowers. And I love, I absolutely love on this pair how this blue stripey flower is uh, not imitated, but, uh, you know, absently replicated over there. <clears throat> I really think these are beautiful. And I do have to say that this little one is probably the best one here. I mean... That is, that is very well done. It is a beautiful design. I mean, I'm not disappointed about that at all. It is slightly smaller than I was expecting. I, I, that's my mistake, not the seller's. Oh, the seller, uh, Mad Dog Madsen. He had some pretty good stuff. Uh, you spell that just like it sounds. Madsen is, uh, M-A-D-S-E-N. But yeah, man. It's all one word, sorry. I like to mention the sellers because, you know, a lot of the time, you know, they've got more than one piece and I could only afford one. And, and some of these things deserve to be somewhere special with their, with their little buddies. I mean, look at, do you guys feel like I've done a good thing in like, you know, bringing these four pieces possibly back together for the first time in a hundred years? The older uh, Kodenji, Kodenji, um, you know, obviously he passed in 1915, so, I mean, it could well be a hundred and, uh, 106 years since these have, uh, seen each other, or maybe I'm just introducing extended family for the first time. Either way, I like it quite a bit. You guys have a super nice day. Happy Sunday. Um, I might make another video today. I've got some stuff out of boxes that I'd like to talk to you about, and I like, uh, I like a bunch of like enamel and stuff. I think that's all interesting. So I've got a pottery pot from Kinkozon. Uh, if you're into that, you know, come on back by. Maybe we'll talk about it for five minutes or so. Um, this is Austin at the Best I Can Afford Antiques channel. And I appreciate you coming over.